Hey guys, this is going to be just a quick video to show you uh, an experiment I've been running down here. And uh, basically it's just trying to determine sub roadbed underlay. Um, is there any point to doing it? Does it, does it actually have an effect on uh, track noise? So I've uh, put together a little piece of test track here. Four pieces of flex track. Two of them over here are on top of a three millimeter uh, rubber product and the uh, the two pieces of flex track here are on the traditional just cork on plywood and then I uh, I just been running some cars on it to determine uh, if there's any differences in the sound the two methods of laying track that I'm testing uh, one is this so it has the three millimeter rubber and uh, the other one is just the tr traditional uh, Midwest cork on the 5 eighths fur plywood. I guess I should note too, there's one other, so using the fur plywood, um, I went with fur because it's slightly more dense than spruce and uh, so any kind of any kind of density is going to help you reduce uh, the amount of sound that transmits through the sub road bed into your bench work framing. So uh, all my sub road bed is uh, fur G1S 5 eighths plywood. This is the uh, rubber product that I'm using. Uh, it was, I found it at Home Depot, and uh, they were saying that it was a new product at Home Depot. It's like a recycled, recycled rubber product, basically. So the roll I bought, they have the smaller rolls. I got the bigger one. This one's 22 and a half square feet, and uh, it's 32 dollars. So that breaks down to a dollar forty a square foot, and it's really easy to work with. You just cut it with scissors. So looking at it based on cost, uh, it's really not that expensive to do all my sub road bed uh, with this. It'd be, you know, maybe a hundred bucks or something. Can do quite a bit uh, with 22 and a half square feet. There's a better view of the uh, the two profiles of the track. So obviously the three millimeter rubber adds a little bit of height to your track profile. So over here, like, just audibly standing here listening to it, um, it's really hard to tell the difference. Like really. I can hear a slight difference between the uh, the rubber and the uh, and the non-rubber track. It seems to be um, the amount of noise that transmits to the benchwork. As I can almost hear, pan up here. So my uh, benchwork there attaches to the uh, roof joints, and on the non-rubber benchwork, you can actually hear the track noise up in the up in the floor joists because it's it seems like it's transmitting through the uh, right through the the wood and the bench work and everything so definitely on this side you can't hear that as much and uh, since this is still unfinished bench work and there's going to be drywall and stuff I don't think as much sound will transmit in the future but there isn't there is an audible difference this is uh kind of hear it. I'm not sure if the camera will pick it up or not, but I can definitely, uh, it is a little bit louder for sure. So I did download a, a noise, um, like a decibel meter app for my phone. Not sure how accurate it is, but maybe it can give some idea. Um, if there's really any difference. So on this one, it looks like it peaked around between I saw 73 I think was the highest so try it over on the rubber side So the highest I saw there was a 68, so that's about, you could say 5 decibel uh, reduction. Um, not 5 decibels isn't very much, but uh, 
I think this is only three cars, so when you have a full uh, 30 car train like my Leo is going to be designed for, I think it's going to be worth um, using this rubber to try to uh, alleviate a little bit of the track noise. So I think we could, we could break it down into just a quick little pros and cons about doing this. So obviously the, uh, the pros are the sound reduction. We, we're getting a very roughly estimate of uh, about 5 decibel reduction um, into the benchwork. Now this, remember this is just the, uh, the very basic benchwork right now. And once I drywall the backdrops, that might help knock the sound down some more. But as it is right here, as the way the benchwork is right now, it seems like it's about a 5 decibel reduction in track noise. And uh, yeah, that's the main pro about it. Uh, really, sound reduction is the only uh, kind of gain you're getting by doing uh, the your underlay this way. So for the cons, um, Definitely going to cost you more because you're going to have to, you know, buy this rubber. Or um, I don't. My friend, he had used. Uh, I think it was called. What the heck was it called? Super Blue. It was a roofing uh, fixing material, and it was about a one millimeter, and uh, roughly the same cost as this rubber from Home Depot. So that's why I chose this uh, rubber from Home Depot. But any kind of dense material that you put under the cork is going to do kind of the same thing. Just detach it from the. Uh, from the benchwork and provide a little bit more insulation. So you're, it's going to cost you more. Um, it's going to cost you more in time and labor because you have to. Uh, you're going to have to go around and cut exactly all the pieces you need for all your uh, all your sub road beds. So that's uh, gonna, you know that'll be quite a bit for me. Especially it's all curved pieces, so it could take uh, quite a bit more time to get that before you get to track lane. And uh, the other con, I don't know if it. I really don't know if it will matter or not, but. Uh, Anytime you secure two layers of material together like this, you're going to have a different uh, coefficient of expansion. Um, so the plywood's going to expand and contract at a different rate than this rubber will. And I did my best to look it up um, and, and try to see if I could really see if there would be any kind of expansion. And the internet's kind of, there really isn't a real accurate number for how much rubber um, expands and contracts uh, with temperature change. And I mean, you got you also you still have this with your cork and your track as well, and lots of people see that and have problems because um, the rails have a way higher uh, coefficient of thermal expansion than the benchwork. So you're you're once you secure all these layers together like a sandwich, if you have big temperature swings, you're going to have uh, the things wanting to move horizontally. I don't think it's going to be a big problem in my basement. I've had a thermometer down here in the summer and the winter months. And really the change is uh, not too much throughout the day. Like you, a five degree, five degree Celsius temperature change would be like huge for the, for my basement. It doesn't really change that much besides um, in the summer, it's a little warmer in the winter, it's a little cooler, but uh, day to day, uh, it's pretty consistent. So I don't think that's going to be a problem, but it still needs to be a consideration as you're, you're adding another layer of complexity to your already um, three layers of stuff that it w is wanting to to move and stretch with uh, temperature. Uh, my friend and I we also talked about um, another method of sound reduction that I think would probably help as, as well. And once you kind of get your um, your your terrain done, that almost acts like a speaker box kind of, and uh, helps transmit more noise once your uh, once your benchwork comes along further and you have that terrain on both sides. It's almost like a little amplifier when the when you have you know, track noise on top, you have a kind of a sound resonating box inside all each one of these uh, joist pieces. So what we were talking about was maybe taking uh, that Roxel green, uh, it's like a dense um, sound, sound insulation, and actually um, putting it up inside each, each uh, open piece of benchwork once you're all done and complete, and uh, to see if that would reduce track noise as well. So that's another thing I might explore in the future. But uh, there's no point in trying that right now because there, the benchwork is going to change a lot. Like I'm going to have a um, quarter inch drywall will be on the backdrop everywhere. And that's really going to secure, um, tile, tile the benchwork together. And then also the terrain still needs to be done and ballasting and all that. So I think in the future we'll try, we'll do another experiment once I get to that point And we'll try putting that uh, Roxel safe and sound and see if we get a sound reduction as well. But it's just another kind of idea that my uh, my friend had and I thought that was a... That was a pretty good idea to try out. So it, uh, I think this little experiment was worthwhile. It took a, 
there's a little bit of work to kind of get this put this together uh, lay down a little bit of track and uh, I should mention I did use the same silicone uh, to secure the uh, the rubber underneath to the um, to the plywood and then again the cork to the rubber so using the rubber I actually ended up with another uh, layer of silicone so that could could also help with the, the noise cancellation I think I'm going to use like something like no more nails or something to secure this because silicone doesn't seem to stick to it very well so I'll be ripping this all up and uh, sanding it down to redo it um, you guys know I'm a big fan of like Pell Solberg's uh, layouts that he built and he in the past had used some some type of a rubber a dense rubber material underneath his uh, his cork to uh, do the same type of thing so I think I've proven that uh, yeah you do get a it's not a huge reduction in noise but uh, for bigger tr for larger trains and uh, I think since you'll really only have one shot to do this once you uh, you know once you get past ballasting or anything like that you can't really go back and uh, redo the you know the underlay underneath the cork so I think I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put this rubber down under on top of my sub road bed everywhere and uh, I think it'll be worth it hope you found this video useful thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you next time